Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 278 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Did I nail it? No, I think it's 77. 77. Okay, welcome, think... to, welcome to episode 277, the first episode where Rosie doesn't know the answer. Second I made episode, a mistake. Actually. Yeah, I made a mistake last week. I think I said 77, it was 76. And that's last strike one. Week. But now you're up to strike two. So, you know, well, Oops. I've lost Keelan. I don't know what I'm going to do when I lose Rosie. If she gets one more episode wrong, because I've never done that in my life. Um, <laughs> guys, look, I'm coming everywhere. Okay, I'm also doing shows and I'm going all over the state. Loosebeers.com, uh, going all over the country. I've, I'm going to uh, Melbourne, Geelong, Ballarat. That's on sale in Victoria. New South Wales, we've got Sydney and Newcastle. I haven't done there for three years. I want to see you there. Uh, I'm going to Brisbane and Gold Coast and Queensland. Uh, at some point, we're going to Tassie. Uh, they're not on sale yet, and Adelaide is coming, but where it's not on sale yet either. Perth is on sale. So, loosebeers.com, uh, my gap year tour is on sale now. Come and see the uh, incredibly long freak try to manoeuvre his way around the apparatus in his mouth. It's uh, going to be great. Uh, if you're in uh, Victoria, it, uh, this is the show is mostly the Straight Outta Frankston show with a bit of new stuff about my head. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be mostly material that you that was done in the comedy festival. So, if you want to see that stuff, up again if or if you missed it uh come to that and uh the show this year was amazing and then i got a bunch of new gear about my new gear um so yeah with that uh being out of being out of the way and said uh if i hear are you using the my maccas app one more time i'm gonna fucking flip out and burn down a mcdonald's have you been going to mcdonald's recently Mm. the drive-thru every oh, they, i went last night did they did they say you're using the my mac is app today no, every I don't even know what that is. Day, every fucking day, I go to McDonald's. Every time, I don't go every day. Every time, they go, are you using, are you using the My Macca's app today? No, I don't want a fucking app. I'm there. I'm at McDonald's. What do I want a fucking McDonald's app on my fucking phone for? Do you get like a discount or something? I don't care. If, if I got a blowjob, I wouldn't download it. Do you know how fucking embarrassing it is to, down, to have oh, the, the McDonald's app on your phone? The hallmark of, of a fatty, that is, and a loser. What are you doing with your life? Who would download a fast food app onto their phone to save, what, 30 cents? What type of deals are they hang, handing out that are going to make me d downloading it worth it, okay? I'm at McDonald's. It's not exciting. I don't need a, a fucking discount code in an app. What are you doing? They're trying to sell my data to, to a franchise that needs it, like Red Rooster? <laughs> Like, why Why the fuck would I... And also, why are they making them say it? I feel sorry for the poor people working in the drive-thru. They've... At the one that's near me, I don't know if it's happening all over, but the one that's near me, they've clearly been instructed, if, if you don't say, are you using the My Macca's app today, before you say hello, you, you lose a finger. Because I don't think they've ever said anything else before. Hi, are you using the My Macca's app today? And then instead of go, instead of thinking of what I would like, I have to go, no. And then they have to go, oh, well, maybe you should download. It's like, no, I don't want to fucking have a conversation about an app on my phone. <laughs> you know, I would much rather one of the poor impoverished women working behind the counter at McDonald's when I, when I pull up in the passenger seat. <laughs> when I pull up, right, I would much rather they go, hi, have you subscribed to my OnlyFans today? Then I might go, what's on offer there? And they go, oh, just feet stuff, no nudes. I go, no, thank you. But I'm sure someone in this line would appreciate that. I don't want to fucking, you know what I've started doing? Me and, me and my girl, when they go, hi, are you using the My Macca's app today? We just go, uh, no, are you? <laughs> oh my god! And then and then they go, oh, what? Well, well, no! And then and then we go, oh, okay. Well, can I get? And then we say our order, and it just flips them out. Highly recommend it. Oh Hi, are you using the my Macca's app today? No, are you? Uh, I've I've never been asked this before in my life. I never considered being asked this question because they can't say no. But they also can't say yes because they don't have it on their fucking phone. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up. I'm not going to download your app, okay? I wanted to get that out of the way. 
Would you ever download the My Maccas out, Rosie? I don't think so. Unless I, it was like a one-time thing, I'd get like a discount or something. Come on. Isn't there like a isn't there like a month where you get to play Monopoly and you get discounts and stuff? Yeah, I, I saw someone playing that in the airport and I wanted to take their phone and just launch it across the airport in the lobby. I wanted to oh. I wanted to I wanted to take their phone and go, "You're better than this." And fucking like they were rolling the dice to see if they could get fr- like three free McNuggets. Oh my god! And they were an adult. If you if you're nine years old, you can have the Mac, my Maccas app. I feel like I don't go to Maccas like enough. It would be like once, like every two months. I go there to get coffee, a bit. Is the coffee like good though? It it, it unfortunately slaps. It's quite good. Yeah. Thank God. Because they were like, they tried to do their shit American coffee and Australians as a whole were like, no. Like we did with Starbucks. Because mm. Starbucks launched like 50 or 60 stores across the country and everyone everyone here was like, no, we have much yeah. better coffee elsewhere. Because the beauty of Starbucks was everywhere in America has horrifically terrible coffee. Mm. So they just like were like, oh, we're trying a little bit. And Americans were like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And then they came to Australia. And we were like, yeah, we have, like, really good cafes. Every- we have too many good cafes, actually. You know, we-, we, have- we have two cafes per capita. We don't need a Starbucks. And they all closed down, other than, like, one. Oh, the yeah, CBD. there's, like, one yeah, in South Melbourne. Yeah. 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 And then, and then it's-, it's mostly, from what I see, tourists and, like, some uni kids are going there. Yeah, I think Orlando goes there. He loves to get his like frappuccino. Is that your brother? Yeah. Yeah. His fra- just like really sugary coffee. <laughs> yeah, see that's that's the only reason you should go there is to get something shameful that that no other person, no Australian would ever make you. Yeah, he's also sixteen as well, so that yeah, I'll allow it. <laughs> see he can have the my magazine. But once he <laughs> yeah. turns seventeen, he has to delete it off his phone because if I catch him in an airport with the My Maccas app, I'm going to throw it across the lobby at a security guard and cause a real big scene. Mm. Mm. As anyone with the My Maccas app deserves. If anyone comments below and goes, well, actually, if you have the My Maccas app, you get, well, hey, man, if I ever see, I'm going to grab you by the hair and, and put your head into a toilet and then flush it. And go, nerd, you got the My Maccas app? That's what I'm going to, I'm going to bully you. All right? And then you're going to have to come home and talk to your mum, because I know you live with your mum, because you've got the My Maccas app. And then you're going to go, oh, what happened? They go, oh, Lewis Spears gave me a swirly. And they're going to go, the guy with braces and a gap tooth gave you a swirly? Get out of my house. And then you'll be homeless. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen if you come to my show and go, hey, I've got the My Maccas app. Straight in the fucking toilet. I'll, I'll take you to the women's. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 so, great. That's good. I've, I've checked that off there. Um, we've got a uh, on the Patreon. We've got a great uh, extended cut of the interview with the guy who headbutt Tony Abbott, mm. um, Astro Labe. Uh, if you <laughs> if you can't tell, the interview was heavily heavily edited because there was a lot of stuff that could not go on YouTube, and there was also. Quite a lot of of, uh, of rambling and tangents that, while very funny and entertaining, mm. added absolutely nothing to, <laughs> to like the core point of the. Dude, I reckon that that extended cut that we put on Patreon is like if you want to if you want to watch me struggle for like what 20, 30 minutes to get to the end of a short story mm. with a guy who who like is a nice guy but really does not want. Me to, like he wants to take the scenic route to the story and I'm like yeah. let's get on the express train and get to the end it's a great battle of the minds and uh, and I lose I would say 100%. yeah that interview alone was 52 minutes <laughs> yeah. And the, yeah there's a, there's, a, there's a bit of stuff in there that we couldn't even put on patreon so yeah the uh, patreon is like 30 minutes I think it's 20 minutes yeah. of Astro's interview yeah and well, the, it's really good and we also uploaded yeah. an extended version of Greeley's interview as well yeah. which just adds like a whole bunch of context to the situation that uh, I was actually sad to remove but it just made the, the video length like massive. And I wasn't yeah. trying to do a documentary. So um, that's up there on the Patreon. That's really good. And there's also like uh, the the Sunday Supplement, the Patreon-only podcast that uh, we've been doing every week for ages now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, check that out. And it supports what we do and we appreciate it. Now, um, 
Rosie, you have something to tell me? You have a confession to make? Oh, no. Um, you were looking at inappropriate material on the on the work computer a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Is that true? Are we going to tell people this? <laughs> no, I, I came to work the other day and Rosie goes, Lewis, I have to tell you something. And I'm like, oh, fuck, what's, what's I'm going to get so much shit for this. <laughs> and she goes, well, I was editing on the work computer and you talked about something called hentai and I didn't know what it was. <laughs> so I looked it up on the work computer. <laughs> Okay. You'd never heard of hentai in your life. So I'd heard of it, but I didn't real like, I knew it was like some type of porn, but I didn't realise like just hentai was just like... A genre or yeah. a category. Yeah, I thought it was like, I don't know, I knew it was anime porn, but I thought it was, I don't know, I didn't know that just the word hentai just meant porn. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I was like, oh, I don't know, is this like an anime or like a manga or something? Yeah. So I was just like, oh, he's talking about this. I'll put it in like the green screen background or whatever. And I <laughs> which is just like, which is, you just could never do. That'd be like typing in, oh, he's he's talking about anal. So I'll just put some footage in the video. <laughs> you just <laughs> Now you sometimes like to work at the public library. Were you doing that there? No, thankfully not. <laughs> thankfully not. That's but good. Yeah, I... Got quite shocked when I typed that into Google Images. Would, would you say that's a plus or a minus for working for me? Um, definitely a minus <laughs> with how much it comes up with your audience. Yeah, mm, yeah, and that's I would honestly say that's the audience's fault because that was literally crowd work. Like yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't. I, it's very rare that I'm talking about hentai at work, or is that a blatant lie that I'm just that sounds true to me, but it's just. A lie. I feel like it comes up at work when I like check the Discord or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, great. So that's you know that's a bit about our work culture here, guys. Um, uh, please don't review us on Glassdoor. Um, look, uh, <laughs> um, I had uh, I had my my final meeting with the surgeon before the big boy surgery. That's uh, coming soon. Now, mm -hmm. um, I have to uh, come clean here and, uh, and admit that everything that I've told you guys up until this point has been a complete lie. Not intentionally, it's because I'm a moron. Uh, when I went in to get my surgery, it's a really good process where five people in a row confirm with you what surgery you're having done so that no one fucks it up because it's on the paperwork and if only one person tells you and then you kind of mishear it, they know, oh, we've got the wrong details here and you don't go in for like you get you, uh, like a, a little nose job and come out with fake breasts, right? So they did that to me and uh, the, the woman's going, all right, so you're getting your wisdom teeth taken out uh, and you're getting this and you're getting that. And I'm like, yes. And then I go further in, they tell me you're getting this, your wisdom teeth taken out, you're getting a palate expansion, and you're getting that. I'm like, yes. And then I get to the third person, they go, so you're getting your wisdom teeth out, uh, you're getting a palate expansion, and you're getting that. I'm like, yes. And then I got to the final stage where I talk to the actual surgeon before I go under, and he goes, so you're getting your wisdom teeth out. And I went, I'm getting my wisdom teeth out. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. And he goes, oh, was that, were we always doing that? And he goes, well, yeah, don't, don't you know that? I'm like, oh, okay. Take your word for it. And he looked at me like I was the dumbest cunt on earth because if I didn't realise that was happening, I probably would have raised it with the first person who told me and he knows that I would have been told four times. But I didn't realise that I had forgotten that I was getting my wisdom teeth out until then. So mm -hmm. I'm dumb for not remembering, but I'm also an idiot for not noticing the first time I was told that I forgot that I'm getting my wisdom teeth out. Anyway, do the surgery, I go under, and I wake up, and I'm all swollen, and I'm all fucked, and I'm off my head, I'm texting Belle Delphine, I'm liking Arabic weddings, photos, right, as we've gone through, and then my swelling goes down, and I look at my face, and I go, gee, they haven't really moved it forward much. I was thinking, I, I know that I was getting my jaw moved forward, and it doesn't, and I made a whole video about, oh, I'm going under to get my upper jaw moved forward. I'm going to come back and I'm going to look very different. And I'm 
made a whole video about the process of, of the upper jaw me, being moved forward. And everyone's like, man, that's crazy that you're going through that, you're getting the upper jaw moved forward. And I remember thinking, oh, man, it didn't move it forward much. I don't look too different. i got this big gap now, but I don't look too different. Maybe it's just the swelling and I can't tell. And then uh, I go through more healing. A few weeks go by and I go, oh, I can really feel the screws like in my head. It feels very strange when I make certain facial expressions. I can feel the screws. That's weird. I wonder if that – I hope that will go away. And then a few more weeks go by and I'm like healed enough and well enough to go into my follow-up appointment with the surgeon, the first one. And he gets me in, and he goes, hey, Lewis, how is it? And I go, oh, great, I think I'm healing well, um, but something about it is really annoying me. And he goes, oh, what is it? And I go, oh, when I make, like, f- certain facial expressions, I can feel the screws, like, in my head. And he goes, what screws? Uh, and I go, oh, just the ones that, that like, around here. And he goes, um, I, didn't, I didn't use any screws. And I was like, oh. Well then, how did you how, how did you do the surgery? Because what do you mean? I'm like, well, you need screws to do the, like, isn't that what we talked about? I looked it up and he goes, uh, what surgery do you think you got? <laughs> and I go, oh, you know, you moved my upper jaw forward. He goes, I didn't do that. I'm like, oh, what did you do? I was, I thought the whole fucking time. I've been telling everyone. My mum, I told Jazz. I thought we had the whole fucking thing moved forward. He goes, I didn't do that. I told fucking 100,000 people that I, that I was going to get my jaw moved forward. And he goes, no, no, no. All we did was we expanded it. We didn't move it forward at all. We just cut here and then widened it. That's why you have the gap tooth and your teeth haven't moved forward at all. And I went, oh, fuck. He goes, yeah, it's a very minor surgery. I'm like, oh, no, the next one's going to be awful. So I did not get my upper jaw moved forward. I was just completely wrong. So I'm just a dumb cunt. I just did not realize at all what surgery I was getting. I told Rosie for weeks, oh, yeah, you're no. going to move forward. I'll be off for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what did you think when I came in? I didn't think you would be off for six weeks because when you said wisdom teeth, I'm like, yeah, well, I've had that done myself. And I'm yeah. like, I know you're like fucked for like a week. Yeah. But, and then I saw the swelling go down. I was like, I don't think it was like as intense as, well, he's recovered quite quickly. Yeah. So, we yeah. Think, this guy doesn't look very different at all. <laughs> yeah. So, is the screws the next one? So, so what, what is actually, is I will get my upper jaw moved forward. That is happening. But they're doing it in the same surgery as they move my lower jaw forward, which makes so much more sense. Because if they just moved the upper one forward, I would then have the problem would be even worse where this would be moved forward, but my chin would still be recessed. But because this is forward, I would look even worse. I would just have a massive like overbite or underbite, whatever it is. Yeah, overbite, yeah. Yeah, so... So that is happening, the upper jaw, but it's happening at the same time as the lower, which makes so much more sense. But it's also so much more terrifying because mm-hmm. this little minor surgery was, wasn't was minor. They still like completely like detached it and then cut it. They just didn't move it forward. So I, ha- I still have no bone underneath my nose still uh, pretty much. Um, but yeah, it makes the second one sound a lot more crazy. But yeah, all that, all that, all those horrific, gr- gruesome details I told you about in that that I'm, I'll be gone for a while video, that's all misinformation. <laughs> that's all medical <laughs> disinformation, and you shouldn't trust it. And this is why you can't trust any cunt who tells you anything about medical information because not even the guy getting the surgery knows what's happening. <laughs> Do you know how much fucking research I did about the thing that was ha- that I thought was happening to me? My wrong. God. The whole time I was wrong. <laughs> my mum was sitting to me next to the, next to me on the bed, going, "I mean, you're pretty swollen, but it, you don't look that different." <laughs> she was going, "Oh, I think they fucked up. They didn't move it forward enough." Such an idiot. So the the second surgery is where that's all happening. But anyway, I had I I found that out weeks ago, uh, and then I had the like yesterday, I had the follow-up with the surgeon, the final one, for 12 months. So now I'm just in the hands of the orthodontist who will move my teeth and close the gap 
and then eventually I'll get this this spacer out that's affecting my speech. People think the gap tooth is affecting my speech. It's all the spacer. I sounded uh, way worse when I got the spacer in than I do now. Why would they think the gap tooth is making you sound different? I think it, like a lot of people are saying that I have a lisp, which I don't. I sound different, but I'm not lisping, really. Uh, yeah. I think I look like I would have a lisp with the gap tooth. <laughs> That's the problem. I look like I should have one, and then people hear me say some words wrong, and they go, he's got a bloody lisp. I don't. I sound like I'm uh, speaking with my mouth full because I am. That's what I sound like. Um, so had the follow-up, and basically I'm not going to see the surgeon for another year, and that's when we start designing my new head. And I asked him a bunch of questions. I'm like, when can I return to combat sports? I don't do combat sports. I just wanted to know when can, when can like uh, someone at a show who's really offended punch me in the head and it won't be catastrophic for me. Mm. Six weeks from now, I can start really dropping the, the big jokes. And that's, that works well because that's where my tour is. Mm. So that's really good. So gap year, I'm not, I'm not encouraging it. I'm just saying that if I did get punched in the head, uh, it would just shred their fist because I've got braces <laughs> and my lip. And I asked him, uh, I was like, okay, cool. So that's happening. Uh, I'm healing well. And I'm like, oh, can I get like a, a 3D print of my skulls before and after? And he says, yes. So that's awesome. I'm going to get him to sign my after, I reckon. Because <laughs> I'll sign the first one. Like I did this, you know, this is my homemade skull that I kind of fucked up. He can sign the, the, the better one. Mm. And then I'm like, okay, cool. So in a year we have our like planning meeting for the first, the second surgery, the one that actually solves my problem and changes how I look heaps. And I'm like, that's when we start designing. He goes, yeah, I'm going to give you three options. And immediately I just thought I would like way more than three options. You know, what three options is he going to get? I don't want three options. I want the Sims. I want to be presented with a blank slate and a slider. And if I wanted to, I could pull my chin out all the way to here and fuck around with all the settings. I don't want three options. You ever played a video game that gives you like three different options for your character? You're like, this is not enough customization for my character. I don't get to pick what I look like. I don't feel like me. That's what I'm getting, but with my own head. What are the three options going to be? Like you, but able to breathe. Uh, you, but with, uh, you know, a wide smile or incredibly handsome. Is he going to give me a scale of hotness? <laughs> like current average hottie? Or is he going to give me like types of hotness? Mm -hmm. You know, like this is uh, American movie star head. And this is uh, uh, Timothy Chalamet head, right? <laughs> where, where a lot of girls think you're hot and a lot of guys think you look like a little goblin who lives in a cave. Why is that? <laughs> well, because, uh, because uh, he looks like a little goblin in a cave who lives in a cave. And if you saw him on the street, you wouldn't think twice. But you put him in a, in a, in a fluffy little dress shirt and, uh, and, and make his eyes look smoky. And girls go, he looks cute. And, and that's fine. But I'm saying if the cunt worked at Coles, you would think he needs to eat a sandwich. <laughs> Am I wrong? Put him in put that guy in a fucking Woolworths uniform and see how many hoes want to suck his dick. None. He's a good actor. And he looks very pretty when they dress him up at award shows with sequins on his suit. But if you took those sequins off, you go, this guy looks like a hungry waiter. <laughs> right Rosie's all gonna go on strike if I keep trashing this guy she's gonna go that's it he's actually beautiful and you don't understand <laughs> or maybe 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 he goes alright so here is like uh, a more mainstream attractive head and here is something here's like a that, so the mainstream attractive head completely changes how you look, but it's more like conventionally attractive. Then the second option is like, here's like the most handsome version of your head, right? 
So like definitely me, but much more attractive. And then he goes, and here's a silly one. <laughs> and it's like, and it looks like a like a an elf, but not like a Lord of the Rings elf, pretty one, like a like a Skyrim elf that's like kind of fucked and pixelated. And then I go, I'll give you the silly one. I think that's that's a bit of fun. That. So yeah, I don't know. I want. I definitely want way more than three options though. I mm. hope I can. Can I, you know what? Give me no option two's uh, jaw with option three's chin. I, I hope. Hopefully, do I can do that. A little bit of mix and match. Yeah, I don't know. It's. I, I'm trying not to think about it because I, the more I think about it, the more at the end of the process I'll go. Oh, I should have picked gone with option two. Because that would be the fucking worst. You're going, oh, shit, I should have got the other head. This looks mm. weird on me. Mm. You know? Because what if, like, Henry Cavill, right? Gorgeous skull. But, it, he, but he's only really good looking because he also has the body that matches that. Do you imagine if we put his head on my body... I don't think I'd be able to support the jawline. <laughs> I think you'd put his head on my body and then I would just crumple. My head would be too heavy. It wouldn't look right. If you put Timothy Salome's head on his body, you know, that would look <laughs> even weirder. Massive, huge, hulking body, little baby goblin head. <laughs> I don't think anyone would like it. Might as well work at Coles. Guys, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Speaking of becoming the best, most attractive, beautiful version of yourself, Manscaped.com is is here for you and all of your personal grooming needs. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Or code SPEARS if that makes you feel better as well. (laughs) I will say, lisping is very comfortable with the gap tooth because your tongue comes through the teeth. SPEARS. Can you fucking hear that? That's me blowing through my front teeth. <laughs> That's horrible. Manscaped.com has the best uh, ball bag trimmer in the game. The Lawnmower 4.0, best personal groomer out there. I use it all the time. All right? It's good stuff. I've used it on, on, on my facial hair. I've used it on my nether, li- nether regions. Looks great. Feels great. Never cut myself once. I tell you what, some other shavers I've used feel like a paper shredder. Horrible. Not the Lawnmower 4.0. They also have deodorant, lip balm, which I was using heaps when I was recovering from surgery, and it was really good, uh, and a uh, bunch of other stuff. Nose trimmers, they got the works, all right? Check them out, manscaped.com. These codes appear for 20% off and free shipping. They're just great, and they support the show and they have for years, so get behind them. Everybody needs one of those things. You know, might as well support a brand that supports uh, the show you like. Um, <clears throat> now... Let's get into uh, this Jordan Peterson uh, news. So Jordan Peterson is uh, a guy that I that I used to really really like um, when he first kind of started. I kind of uh, I liked him talking against compelled speech because while it was like a well intentioned law, I thought making laws about speech in general scares me, uh, and I don't think it's good for the world. Um, but uh, I really got into when we started talking about his personal responsibility and, you know, change the world by changing yourself and just kind of uh, had a, had, had a, what I thought was quite a positive message for young men, which is, you know, take all this fucking energy that you want to put into changing the world and use it to improve yourself. And when you become a better version of yourself, you will then be able to change the world in a positive way and an effective way. Because a lot of people that you know, hate the world and themselves, try to change the world in a way that just makes everybody angry and is destructive to themselves and the planet and achieves nothing. Um, not, the, not the planet and the environment, I mean more society and the world. Uh, so I really like that. I, uh, I got his book, uh, 12 Rules of Life. I thought it was a pretty good book. I thought the lobs stuff was a bit fucking boring. Uh, I saw him live in Melbourne. I thought, I thought the live thing was amazing and it seemed like he genuinely cared about people bettering themselves and improving themselves and becoming a better version of themselves. He didn't talk about politics at all. All he talked about was, you know, the beauty of becoming the best version of you. Uh, He got emotional during the show talking about some people that uh, came up to him and said that he he bettered their lives. Uh, And he seemed to, like, genuinely care and be, like, a really sweet, 
nice, insightful dude. Um, and then, I don't know, recently, man, he seems like he's really bitter and angry. Uh, you know, his wife almost died. That sent him into a mental health spiral. He ends up addicted to fucking uh, opioids, I presume. Ends up in rehab in Russia, almost dies himself. And then he comes back and he seems very angry, upset and bitter. Maybe rightfully so, because when he was going through all of that, so many people were like celebrating it and making fun of the guy and going, oh, you told the world to clean your room, but all of a sudden your wife almost dies of an illness and now you're sad? What a loser. Can't listen to his own advice. You know, a bunch of people celebrating a man at, uh, being at his lowest. <clears throat> which I thought was scummy. But, you know, the man's come back now, and uh, I know he seems like a bit of a fucking dork to me. He's now playing into, like, right-wing politics, and which I think is just fucking lame. Le playing into, like, either side of the spectrum is a great money move. Don't get me wrong, you know? Uh, it's a great money move. And I've had the opportunity to do that. You know, I've been approached by outlets like Rebel News to create content for them. And I think I made one thing because they wanted to use a character of mine. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's funny. It'll make me some money. I made one. I think I made two. And then I was like, oh, hang on. They're just using this to promote their fucking agenda that I don't necessarily agree with or even understand. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. They can continue to do their thing, but I'm a fucking comedian. I'm not a political pundit, and I don't want to push any political ideology. I'm here to make fun of cunts, right? And uh, I think that's a trap that a lot of people in the public eye fall into, is they do one thing, and then a political group is, really resonates with it for because it fits in nicely with their ideas and they go, if you change yourself just a little bit, we'll welcome you with open arms and, uh, and the other side trashes you for it and people see that and they go, well, this group hates me and that group loves me, so I'm just going to go all in with these people and fuck all of those people. And uh, that's uh, when you see things like Jordan Peterson signing a deal with Daily Wire Plus, you know, Ben Shapiro's outlet. And I just, I just think it's lame. I think it's lame. You know, if your whole thing is uh, about bettering yourself and improving yourself, are you going to lock that behind a paywall uh, and align it with a political ideology and belief system? I think that's lame and disingenuous. But that's just me, you know. And I, had, I got a lot of respect for the guy. I think he had some amazing ideas. But I think that whenever you start leaning into this type of political shit and aligning yourself with other big political figures, I think, I'm like, oh, now you're lame. Now you're, like, uh, uh, scooping up the bag. And maybe he's right to do so. The dude had a brush with death. His uh, wife had a brush with death. Maybe he thought, fuck, I'm going to die at some point. Maybe not now. But maybe I need to fucking make my money and make sure that my family is good forever, get as much cash as I can, and solidify, you know, my financial and my family's financial independence. So I'm going to, you know, capitulate a little bit, scoop up the money from this big group, and make sure my family's okay. It's an option, you know. It's not awesome, but I get it. But recently... Jordan Peterson's in the news because he got banned from Twitter, right? Because he misgendered Elliot Page in a, in a very aggressive way. Now, I got no, I got no issue with trans people. Uh, I think the, the whole thing is very interesting. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity for comedy in the entire thing. Uh, I think, I think if, a, if a mentally sane, grown adult wants to do it, sure... They want to spend their own money on it. They want to fucking turn themselves into what they believe they are or, or have felt that they are. Sure, it's not hurting anybody. I think when it comes to kids and teens, that's when it gets really murky and, and when you need to have a lot of discussion over is this actually the idea? And I, I kind of really lean towards let's wait till everyone's an adult and uh, is spending, spending their own money and uh, is making informed, independent decisions. The kids thing, to me, is whatever. But when someone's an adult, 
if they want to fucking change their name and change what they look like and tell everyone they're this gender, sure, I'll call you the name. You're whatever you say you are. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, to be honest. Um, if you're not hurting anyone, you're spending your own money and it's you and your decision and you're definitely mentally sane, I don't give a fuck. Go for it. Chop those titties off. It's your money. It's your life. Go for it. So a lot of people are like, oh, what if they regret it? That's life, baby. Some people are going to fucking think that this is the problem, the solution to their problems, and then they're going to get there and they realize, oh, fuck, it's actually because of this deep family trauma that I have. But that's being an adult and being in charge of your own life. Sometimes you make the wrong call. But I think that would be a tiny minority of people who fucking transition. And if they're adults, it's their decision to make, you know? We don't make fucking drinking yourself to death illegal. So I don't see a problem with it. Not that <laughs> being trans is, is akin to drinking yourself to death. I'm more talking about the people going, oh, what if they regret it? We need to stop every single transition because a tiny minority regret it. That's their mistake to make. They're adults, right? Kids, different story. Adults, I don't give a fuck. Uh, Jordan Peterson does. <laughs> and he uh, put out a tweet. I'm going to read the tweet. And um, I think it's like, Jordan, this is when, you know what? I only recently lost respect. I just fucking spit everywhere. How disgusting. That's, I reckon that's the top 10 filthiest things that ever, that's ever happened on this show. And I think that uh, one time we talked about a, a, a guy who had sex with his girlfriend while she was wearing a diaper that she had pissed in because she thought it was hot and he came into the diaper. But I reckon that what I just did now was way grosser than that because not only did I spit while speaking, also uh, food from two meals ago came out. Because that's my life now. Because I can't really brush my teeth properly. Because I've got this thing in the roof of my mouth. And that's, you know, and that's life. Sometimes you're, you know, one of the most promising comedians in the country, performing all across the world, sitting backstage with Joe Rogan in LA, all the way from Australia. Other times you're sitting in a cold garage in Frankston, spitting up food from two meals ago. Life has ups and downs, baby. <laughs> And you just got to roll with it. Loosebeers.com gets your tickets uh, in the front row. Maybe you'll catch something. Um, anyway, Jordan Peterson tweet. So he's pulled out something. You're, you were asleep and now you're awake. You haven't heard anything. You're hallucinating. My dog's barking. All right, let's pull up this Jordan Peterson tweet. I think my dog hates trans people. What's going on? Someone talking about Elliot Page? You know, you know, that's not his real name. Hey, that's transphobic. All right. Shush. So I'm trying to pull up this tweet here. Okay. I'm getting it. This tweet is uh, apparently so evil that you can't even find a fucking screenshot of it. I love, I love news articles that are like, what did Jordan Peterson tweet? And they go, here's six ads and we're not going to tell you the answer. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. Can you stop that? Shush. Right. I've got the tweet here. So, uh, Jordan Peterson retweets uh, a news article about Elliot Page transitioning. And uh, I'm just going to read it word for word. This is Jordan's words, not mine. All right. Remember when pride was a sin? This is during Pride Month. And Ellen Page just had her breasts removed by a criminal physician. I mean, yeah, you're going to get banned on Twitter. It's so bad. It's just going to happen. Like, that's going to get you, like, go for it. Say it. If you want to say it, no worries. Go for it. Hurt their feelings. Be a cunt for no reason. But, of course, you're going to get banned on Twitter for that. Like, the... I think the, the guidelines around, like, dead naming and, uh, and being, you know... I mean, to me, it comes across as quite homophobic. And I'm not, like, a social justice guy, but 
coming out during Pride Month and going, remember when Pride was a sin? It's like... <laughs> he deserved to get banned. That was a horrible thing to say. I think... I don't know. I just think that he's gone through this streak of being uh, a loser on Twitter. Like, this is a dude that's like, oh, you need to better yourself and work on yourself and worry about you. And then he goes through this weird phase of, like, retweeting images of plus-size models and going, nah, she's fat. I wouldn't fuck her. Oh, my God. He didn't say that. I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating what he said. He said something like, nope, she's still not hot. You can't convince me that this is hot. What and the hell? I'll be real. Fucking smoke show. Real hot. She wasn't one of those like uh plus like people they say are plus size models, but really they're people that should probably be on like life support and wouldn't survive COVID. But they're just wearing a bikini and they have makeup on. She was like just a a good looking girl who wasn't super model fit. So- she had tits and ass. I'm like, oh awesome. <sighs> Why share that and say? Well, yeah, it's like it's like stuff. lame. I thought you were. Like, I thought you it, like it wasn't funny. It wasn't insightful. It was just Ugh, this chick's fat. I wouldn't fuck her. All right, Grandpa, oh you got God. a wife. And then everyone loses their shit at that. He puts out this big thing going, "I'm leaving Twitter. I'm leaving Twitter. This platform is toxic and evil." You're making You're the one it. calling bitches fat on Twitter. <laughs> like, uh. don't be like, oh, this platform is fucking evil. And also, how gross are fat chicks? <laughs> oh, my like, God. That's the, the toxicity that you're talking about is your tweet. And then, so you put that out there and then you can't handle it. It's lame. It's fucking lame. So that, hap- so that happened before this uh, Elliot Page shit. And then he tweets out this stuff where he, he dead names uh, Elliot Page and then goes, you know, implies that, uh, I guess, gay pride is a sin. Which, I mean, yeah, it is. If you read the Bible, <laughs> it is. It's, it's right. But that's going to violate Twitter's terms, you know? Mm, such a bad thing to say. I also think it's just fucking lame. Like, I think it's lame and I think it's just like, oh, okay, now you're just scooping up the bag from the, the right-wing uh, outlets and pundits. And then he announces his, uh, around this time, he announces his uh, exclusive show with Daily Wire Plus. Who the <laughs> fuck is signing up for Daily Wire Plus, all right? Support me on Patreon. Who is signing up for any news service and paying for it all right people all these cunts go oh journalism is so terrible and awful why is no one telling the truth and then they'll go and sign up to daily wire plus not like not like these guys i like they tell the truth i love it when that five foot two jewish guy in a kipper misgenders people every fucking day and I think there's a conversation to be had about dead naming, right? Caitlyn Jenner thinks it's fine to refer to her as Bruce Jenner if you're talking about when she was Bruce. She's come out and said that. I think that it's a little bit different for famous people, right? My opinion is if you were a very famous person and then you transitioned, but you had all of this work when you were living as a different gender with a different name, I kind of think that, you know talking about oh remember when james did this when they were james i think that's a little bit different to being a private person where you're like hey can you call me sarah now and you go no i'm calling you jim he'll always be jim that's cunty and and just rude famous people have different rules but i also wouldn't be going up to famous people and being like you'll always be jim to me you know I think there's a conversation to be had about that. But I think that, like, just going, <laughs> gay pride is a sin and you'll always be Ellen. It's like, I don't know. And then calling the, the physician criminal for, for chopping off her breasts. That's just not true. You know, it's not criminal. And fucking Elliot Page is 35, dude. It's a 35-year-old man. Pretty sure, and like they've never, 
had like a fucking loopy breakdown, like going off and doing some crazy shit. It's not like an Ezra Miller scenario, you know, where it's like, okay, cool. I'll use the pronouns for now, but that might be a symptom of all the other shit that you also have going on. You know, it's like Ellie Page is like, I'm 35. I'm cutting my tits off. I'm a dude. Let's fucking go. I'm getting abs implanted. That's kind of gnarly. That's like, uh, I reckon that's great. I reckon Elliot Page is out there just fucking living it up right now. Did you realize that Elliot Page is the, is the most alpha male in this scenario? Elliot Page got Jordan Peterson banned from Twitter by doing nothing. <laughs> he cut his tits off ages ago. He cut his tits off ages ago. Jordan just found out about it. Elliot probably, like, checks his phone, like, in the middle of, like, having a threesome with two women. And he's, like, drinking a Bud Light, smoking a cigarette, just got off the jet ski, just fucking living, living the boy's life. Checks his phone. Oh, Jordan Peterson, who's that? Banned from Twitter, talking about my tits, my old tits. That's sick. Anyway, who wants to go fucking, who wants to go play dance and drink? <laughs> Puts on his cap backwards, jumps on a dirt bike. Awesome. But Jordan Peterson released a video after this, and uh, it's it's going to be one of the more cringe things I've seen in a while. I've got a clip here. I've got my favorite clip, and it's cringe. Not the video making the video is not cringe. All right. If you get banned from a platform for a reason that you think is bullshit. Making the video is not cringe at all. That's, that's fine. Cool. Go for it. If you disagree with Twitter, no worries. Now, in this video, Jordan Peterson goes, <laughs> he's not banned from Twitter. Okay? He has not been banned from Twitter. What's actually happened is when you tweet something that goes against the guidelines, Twitter takes the tweet down, and then when the next time you log in, it shows you the tweet that violated their terms. And it goes, this tweet has violated our terms. Uh, to use your Twitter account again, uh, delete it. And then you can use it again. If you do this too many times, we'll delete your account. So he has not been banned from Twitter. All that happens, all that he has to do is click on the delete button and go, yeah, I acknowledge that this violates the terms and then delete. And it deletes and then he has his account back. So he hasn't been banned. Okay, all he has to do is go, yep, cool. I agree to the terms and conditions. And then he gets his account back. And, but he goes, I would rather die than delete that tweet. <laughs> okay, bro. Jump on a dirt bike. Like, who gives a fuck? Delete the tweet. Who cares? It's a tweet. You know? And I thought you were twitting, quitting that platform anyway. I used to really like this guy. And I still have a lot of respect for him in other areas. But this is the lamest shit. I've ever seen like a grown man who's supposedly an intellectual do. The guy dressed up in a three piece suit to film this. Look at him. They set up lights. <laughs> it shot like a fucking movie. It went for 15 minutes about not wanting to delete a tweet. Say it on stage. That's what I do. There's plenty of shit that I cannot say on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok especially. You can hardly even fucking swear on that app. I save it for the stage. There's plenty of outlets out there that let you say what you want to say. And I think that social media should have a lot of rules and laws about what they can censor and what they cannot. But I think that going out there and taking shots at trans people and dead naming them on purpose and saying that pride is a sin and calling the doctor that performed the surgery criminal is defamatory to the doctor. So Twitter doesn't want to deal with that because now the doctor could, who did the surgery, if his name is public, could probably sue Jordan and go, well, actually, that's perfectly legal. I'm not a fucking criminal. I'm suing you. 100% could definitely sue for defamation. It's a mess. Of course Twitter doesn't want it on there, right? But this is my favorite part of the video. He's had a big rant about how he's not going to delete it and how Twitter is a cesspool and all this kind of shit. 
And by the way, this whole fucking video is an ad for Daily Wire Plus, right? And by the way, this whole podcast is an ad for my Patreon, right? He goes, <laughs> after this, this is my favorite bit. I love it. Go. And I'm not taking down that tweet or acknowledging that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Twitter's a rat hole in the final analysis, and I have probably contributed to that while trying to right, use, pause. understand, and... Ma I love that. We'll see who cancels who. What are you, the fucking Riddler? You look like a fucking shit Batman villain. It's like I died in a video game and the character comes up to my body and we go, we'll see who cancels you, Batman. <laughs> That's the lamest shit. I've ever I want to grab him by the hair and push his head into a toilet. Who gives a fuck? It's Twitter. All right. You've got books. You've got live stage shows. You've got your own podcast. You've got a Daily Wire platform that I assume hosts their own content that you can't get banned from. Say it all there. All these social media platforms have fucking rules that are pretty, like, common sense. Not, a lot of them are not common sense, but, like, you know that that would be a rule there. And even if it doesn't make sense, you're like, oh, well, I won't do that if I want to keep my account. Don't fucking tweet shit that you know is going to get your shit taken down and then go, oh, we'll see who cancels who, Batman. <laughs> do you know how many fucking angry comments I'm going to get underneath this? And and what's, what's great about having fucked teeth is that everyone is just going to say that I've got fucked teeth, but they won't dispute my argument. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, oh, why would I listen to a guy with fucked teeth? Oh, yeah? Well, give me 18 months and we'll see who has fucked teeth by the end of this. But I really like, go back a little bit. I really like, there was one thing in this that I really agreed with, actually. Yeah, tw the analysis, this one. Yeah, go there. Twitter's a yeah, there. rat hole in the final analysis. And I have probably contributed to that while trying to use, understand, and master that horrible, toxic platform. Correct. 100% true. It's a horrible, toxic platform. And look how angry it made him. You want to wonder what, you want to know what Twitter does to your brain? This video. Twitter's a rat hole in the final analysis, and I've probably contributed to this in some while trying to understand this horrible platform. Yeah, that's that is Twitter. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up to Twitter. I'd like to keep up with trending news. And then and then you just see like a mass shooting. Someone calls you gay and ugly and fat, and then and then you see an OnlyFans girl stick something in her pussy. That's the app, and it's horrible. And that's what it turns you into. That's going to that's be me in, in a year if I keep looking at Twitter. Awesome. So that's Jordan Peterson, guys. I don't know. I think that I think the guy is incredibly smart and, like, phenomenal at debate uh, and conversation and, like, one of the most, like, uh, like, one of the smartest guys in terms of like being able to articulate himself in conversation with someone who disagrees with him. Like one of the best I've ever seen. Doesn't necessarily mean his, everything he says is right. It's just he's able to explain himself and counter your arguments better than anyone that we've ever really seen on YouTube. That's why he is who he is. Because he's like fucking sick at explaining his position and debunking yours. But this shit is fucking lame. But I do like, I love the sentence, Twitter's a rat hole in the final analysis. <laughs> the guy's the Riddler. And yeah. then this video goes on like 15 minutes and then it ends with like a Daily Wire plug. But in the original video, can you just search Jordan Peterson and, and find his original video? I want to show you how it ends. It'll probably be the first result. Oh, yeah, Twitter ban. Down a bit. Twitter ban. I think that's it. Hello, everyone. Nice. So good. Ago, Go to the end. I want to watch the last 10 seconds. How it ends is...
is so good. Maybe the last 20 seconds is just so, so beautiful. I love how this video ends. I owe some apologies for that, and I'm trying to learn, but it's a release in some real sense to be banned. And I regard it under the present conditions as a badge of honor. <laughs> and it's like, sign up for our shit platform where you can see more videos like that. And they clearly just ended it. He was going to say something else. He didn't, that didn't feel like a conclusion to me. It felt like, like just before the final paragraph of what he was going to say. That seems like they edited it out because he really didn't like finish his sentence on an, this is the end of sentence tone. So it seems like it's like, even the editor was like, all right, dude. I've seen this in a fucking Batman film. That's enough. Daily Wire plus, you know, they're on on that platform. There, um, the whole right wing thing is like, oh, left wing people are trying to indoctrinate our children, and then trying to turn them all gay and trying to get kids to drag shows, which is fucking weird to me, right? But their whole thing is like, oh, these left wing people are in schools trying to indoctrinate children. It's wrong. Daily Wire Plus is making a kid show. <laughs> My God. What's it going to be about? A nuclear family? They got a song in the middle. It goes, don't touch daddy's gun. Don't touch daddy's gun. <laughs> Tommy is dead. Mommy is sad because Billy touched daddy's gun. <laughs> I would sign up. I don't, maybe I could become a writer for that. Like, write a bunch of, like, right-wing, like, songs. I think that, that, that'd that be good. Like, a good career for me. I'm You know, I'm turning around on Daily Wire Plus. If they do that shit, I'll sign up. Mommy cooks and mommy cleans. That's her place in the family machine. That's good. Mm. That's a tune. They all have the same melody, by the way. Right. Because, because I, because you know, they, they don't really teach musical stuff in right-wing homeschooling. All right. Because that's that's the problem with homeschooling your kids, right? As you should, as a right-wing uh, person, so your kids don't get indoctrinated into the left-wing brain mm. rot that is present in all schools. Is if you don't know how to do it, you can't teach your kid. You know, like how many fucking mums and dads know how to play the violin? None. Mm. Unless your name is Lynn. In which case, you probably know piano as well. But not many fucking like Caucasian, you know, families living in Texas. Not many mums and dads, you know, have read Shakespeare and could maybe analyze the book. Mm. So they have to go on. That's why they got to sign up to Daily Wire Plus and learn all about how to become a proper family. When it's time, oh, they need like a bedtime one. And it's like, um, time for bed, time to hit the sack. Don't make friends with anyone. And then that's how it would end. I'm signing up for Daily Wire Plus. This thing's sick, you know? All right. Maybe I'm going to move on from this before I before I say another rhyme that'll just get me fucking ethered. Um, all right. What else is here in my notes here that I want to talk about? Oh, we've got a, a great little thing. Oh, we've, we're almost up to an hour here. All right. You know what? Let's save it for Patreon. We'll, we'll save the, the threesomes story for patreon all right guys i gotta end it here because i've been going for an hour singing nursery rhymes that are just gonna get me in trouble so <laughs> uh, if you want to check out the patreon podcast we're going to continue on over there it's on patreon uh thank you very much for your support thank you to everyone who's got tickets by the way uh these shows i'm not kidding they're small uh sydney is almost sold out melbourne is al almost sold out during pre-sale um i think uh perth is actually very small so that's going to go quick uh what was the other? oh brisbane both those two Brisbane shows, uh, they've got like 
15 or so tickets left. So get them. Loosebeers.com. I want to see you there. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be sick. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, Gold Coast and Brisbane next week, actually. I'm doing Heckle Comedy. I'm headlining there, uh, the Heckle Comedy Club. That's uh, not part of my tour. I'm just popping up. I'm doing like uh, 20 or 30 minutes. I'm headlining. There's going to be a bunch of other comedians. So that's going to be next week. Google Heckle Comedy Club. Uh, Lewis Spears, you'll find it. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to continue on on Patreon. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.